What's up guys? In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you the most essential physics concepts that you need to understand if you want to build the best possible mousetrap vehicle. So make sure you stay tuned. Before I get into the video, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to everyone who is currently watching this video and to everyone who is currently subscribed. I really appreciate your continued support and your patronage to this channel. Now, if you look at our subscriber count, we're currently at 92 subscribers, which is awesome. And we're this close to 100. So what I'm going to do is once we hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to give away some of these tower chimney boom lever jigs that I made that can certainly help you out if you're struggling with a boom lever event or if you just want to build better boom levers. So once we hit 100, I'll be rolling out this giveaway. If you are interested in participating, make sure you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell to be updated when I post more info on this giveaway. With that said, Let's get right into the video. Today, we are going to be discussing the importance of weight with Science Olympiad Mousetrap vehicles. Now, weight and its optimization can improve two things. It can first improve the speed of your vehicle, and secondly, it can improve the distance your vehicle is able to travel. Now, obviously, according to the 2020 to 2021 Mousetrap vehicle rules, the speed of your car is not actually attributed to its sport. However, the distance your car travels and its ability to traverse the entire 12 meters certainly is. So optimizing the weight will certainly help you in your endeavor to build the best Mousetrap car. To truly understand the impact of your vehicle's weight on the ability of your car to move faster and further, we have to look towards the simple force equation that you've probably seen if you ever opened up a physics textbook. Now to explain what this equation says is force equals mass times acceleration. So, if we use some simple algebra to rearrange this equation, we get this equation that acceleration is a proportion of mass over force. Now, if you're just looking straight up at this equation, you may be misled because you may be seeing that acceleration equals mass over force. And therefore, if you increase the mass of your car and decrease the amount of force that, you're, that is applied to the vehicle, then your acceleration should theoretically increase, right? Well, this is the misleading portion because acceleration, if you know, is the change in velocity over time. And acceleration is not the speed of your car. Thus, acceleration has units meters per second squared, while velocity has the units meters per second. And because we want a constant acceleration applied to the vehicle, which essentially means the mousetrap car is traveling faster and faster each second, when we increase the mass of our vehicle, we must in turn increase the amount of force applied to the vehicle to maintain that constant acceleration. So, in very simple terms, if you increase the mass of your car, you must also increase the force that your car exerts upon itself to move forward or that you exert upon the car to move it forward. Now obviously because you cannot physically push the car, the mousetrap must exert that force. And because the mousetrap is only a limited supply of this energy, it is in your best interest to reduce the mass of your car so that 
less force is required to achieve that constant acceleration to improve the ability of your car to move faster and hopefully in turn further. Now let's say we have two cars. Car 1, which is represented by the equation A1 equals M1 over F1, and car 2, which can be represented by the equation A2 equals M2 over F2. Now if we go back to our previous discussion where we want to achieve this one specific and constant acceleration, and we know that's the same for both car 1 and car 2, we can actually combine the first equation and second equation to get m1 over f1 equals m2 over f2. And just to put that into words, the mass of car 1 over the force that car 1 applies equals the mass of car 2 over the force that car 2 applies. So now we can expand further on this equation. Just as an example, let's say that car 2 has two times the mass of car 1. So m2 equals 2 times m1. So expanding upon the previous equation, we can see that m1 over f1 equals m2 over f2, yes. And if we substitute in the fact that m2 equals 2 times m1, we get the equation that 2 times m1 over f1 in parentheses equals m2 over f2. So basically, 2 times the proportion of car 1 for mass over force equals the proportion of mass over force for car 2. So if we look at the forces specifically, the force of car 2, which is the amount of force that car 2 needs to apply in order to get to the specific acceleration of car 1, is 2 times the amount of force that car 1 needs to apply. So if we interpret this information, we can see that car 2 requires a 2 times more energy than car 1 to get to the same acceleration and therefore by reducing the mass of your car you should be able to move faster and further I certainly I pr I'm pretty confident that you can significantly improve your results if you follow this equation and the method the methodology that I just described now equations are fun and all, but let's look at a real life example of this phenomenon. To demonstrate this concept, I'm going to be throwing two different objects. First is this six pound disc, and that goes relatively far, not too far. And this masking tape goes a little bit further. Now note I'm putting the same amount of force on both objects for consistency. Now because the masses of the two objects were very different, where the disc was much heavier than the masking tape roll, the disc traveled much less, much, a much shorter distance, excuse me, than that masking tape roll. And this all comes down to the equation where force equals mass times acceleration. And again, using this, we can determine that heavier objects require a greater amount of force to move at the specific acceleration that compared to lighter weight objects. If you found yourself enjoying this video or found it helpful, please consider hitting the like button. And if you haven't already, consider, consider subscribing to the YouTube channel so we can kick off this Tower Chimney Boom Lever giveaway. With that said, I'll catch you guys next time. Stay unfazed.